Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you to uh, One Touch Ministry Second Off Home Gathering, uh, where our overseers is Pastor Shannon and the Prophet is Nadidra Young, and the campus minister is myself, Minister Henry Jackson. And so I would like to welcome you. We're going to go to uh, Sister Barbara Jackson for the reading of the scripture. Good morning, I'm coming from Matthew 5, verse 5 to 12. And seeking the mother too, he went up unto the mountain. And we, where he was set, his disciple came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that moan, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, and they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall attain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which persecute for righteousness' sake, for, <clears throat> for there is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye, when men shall reveal you and persecute you. And you shall say all matters of evil against your falsely for my sake. But rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for the greatest is the reward in heaven of so persecute they the prophet which were before you. Yeah, we're going to uh, dive in, into prayer. So that you're going to... So we're going to start for uh, praise and worship. Um, no, I have a song that I wanted to sing. Uh, I thought about it. Um, it said, uh, I'm so glad to be here. So glad about it. So glad about it. So glad, so glad about it. Oh, I'm so glad to be here, so glad about it. Oh, I'm so glad to be here. 
Do you have, have a song that you want to sing? Just the light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. All in my home. I'm going to let it shine. All in my home. I'm going to let it shine. All in my home. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. So now we're gonna do the uh, testimony. And they say, do you have a, a testimony? I just thank God for being here. I just thank God for waking me this morning. I just thank God for being so good to me. I just thank God who He is and. He's a wonderful God. I just thank God for being here. You know, um, what I'm battling, God is, I know God is going to see me through. He mm -hmm. said that he would never leave me nor forsake me. But I'm a, I know that it's going to be a hard road, but I know that everything's going to be all right. Amen. I actually uh, thank the Lord for actually uh, waking me up this morning, mm -hmm. for putting me in my right mind, mm -hmm. for, for keeping clothes on my back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for keeping me warm at night, and yeah. you know, yeah, I also thank the Lord for actually closing up certain things. Uh, yeah, for b b bringing me closure. Uh, this month. Right. Um, yeah. So yeah, yeah, the Lord, Lord was going back with me. He was healing my some some of my old wounds, and yeah. you know, he was uh actually bringing some people back into my life. Um, so then I, I can receive that healing. And so I thank the Lord for bringing those people back into my life so I can, uh, so I can be restored in the way yeah, and, and how the Lord want me to be restored. Y'all going to want to go straight into the sermon. Now, be, before I read, I wanted to, to, to I have an introduction here. Um, last, uh, well, I often say, uh, last night, the Lord gave me a, a specific word that he wanted me to speak on, and it was a word. Uh, it was a word called uh, scuff. And you know, the word scuff is spelled S C O F F. And then, and I looked it up on Google, and it means to uh, speak to someone or about something in a scornful manner or marking or mocking way. And then, so it means scarfing means to be to be marked or to or to have someone to talk down uh, towards you. And so and it says here in my introduction, I have written here. It said, said the marking of Jesus occurred several times after his trial and before his crucifixion. It says that Jesus predicted that he would be marked and, and he spoke this in Matthew chapter 20, uh, verse 19, Mark chapter 10, verse 34, and Luke 18, uh, chapter 18 and verse 32. So these marking took place in three stages. And uh, one of the stages we're going to talk about here in this, the first stage is he's go through, through his uh, intimidation uh, 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 following his trial. The second one is following his condemnation from from Pilate, and his third one it was uh, when he was being crucified. And it's noted that the mockery focuses on Jesus' prophetic or kingly roles. And so, if you do have, have your Bibles in Mark chapter fourteen, I want to read a verse fifty-three. I want to read from verse fifty-three down to sixty-five. And it, and it reads here uh, in the voice translation, it reads, they led Jesus off to see the high priest who, who, who had gathered a council of religious and civic leaders, scribes, chief priests, 
and elders to hear the evidence and render some decision re re regarding Jesus. Peter followed at a safe distance all the way into the courtyard of the high priest, and he sat down with the guards to warm himself at their fire. He hoped no one would notice. Verse 55 reads, The chief priests and other religious leaders called for witness against Jesus so they could uh, e e e e execute him. But things didn't turn out the way they had planned. Uh, therefore, there were plenty of people willing to get up and accuse Jesus falsely, distorting what Jesus has said or done. But their testimonies disagree with each other, and the leaders were left with nothing. Some gave the following distorted testimonies, saying, Yeah, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that has been made by human hands. And in three days, I will build another that is not made by human hands. But even here, the witnesses could not agree on exactly what he said. For, for the high priest stood up and turned to Jesus saying that, do you have anything to say in your own defense? Say, what do you think of what all these people have said about you? But Jesus held his peace. In other words, that, that, that uh, Jesus didn't say anything and didn't say a word. So, so it begins reading, so the, the high priest um, has spoke and said that, Are you God's anointing, the, the liberating king, the son of the blessed one? And Jesus responded, I am. One day you will see the son of man sitting at his right hand in the place of honor and power. And coming in the clouds of heaven, then the high priest tore his clothes, uh, and because he was frustrated of uh, of Jesus' answer, and so he uh, spoke to the council that was standing before him, saying, "What else do we need to hear?" So you have heard the blaspheme from his own lips. So what do you have to say about that? And say so here's that the verdict was enormous. Jesus was guilty of a capital crime. And it says here, so the people began to humiliate him. Some even spat on him. And then he was blindfolded. And they slapped and punched him. Saying, come on, prophet, prophesy for us. Tell us who just hit you. Then the guards took him. Beat him as they did so. Here, here we as you start a story of about uh, Jesus being being uh, called in for questioning yeah, about what he he he, he was uh, uh, what well what people was drawing up from some conclusions about him, and so as he so uh, uh, as the people in it says here in the scripture that. That the high priest police had came and come grabbed him, and they come took him to the high priest, uh, uh, uh to the high priest where where the councils were at, and so as they all was gathered at the high priest, uh, uh, place where they usually will uh have these, have these I want I, I want to say uh, uh court filings, um, here here is Jesus being accused. Of him, uh, uh, talking about well, they're accusing him of, of, of blaspheme, and so, uh, they didn't really, uh, uh, like when someone, yeah, will refer to them as God or, or, or like to say anywhere, you know, uh, so you actually putting yourself on the same level as God is what they consider as a blaspheme, and so that was considered, uh, as a crime. As a capital crime, which will be sentenced to death. But however, um, as Jesus was being uh, dragged to this court filing, uh, the scripture says one of his uh, closest disciples, Peter, was sitting when he got there. He wasn't sitting like up front as as to 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 help Jesus. Like like you know when people come to you to court. Yeah, they normally sit right by you to to kind of defend. Well, they're trying to show support. 
uh, P P Peter wasn't there on Jesus' side to show support, and so he he morally sit on the upper uh, opposite side, yeah, of where the actual high priest uh, 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 guards and police you know was sitting. And so he didn't want to blend out, or he didn't want people to know um, that he was, was a follower of Jesus. I, I'm assuming, and so he's sitting there, and Jesus is being accused of these crimes. And 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 so as Jesus being accused of these crimes, yeah, we actually see that they that that they were speaking off some things that he said uh, as as before. They they needed. Proof to to actually accuse him of blaspheme, so they could actually you know send him to to death. However, uh, all of these uh, accusations that the people were stating that they heard him say, um, and, and about and the Bible said that even though they stated they were they wasn't very accurate with their words. As in other words, they were speaking against him, but 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 itself all of what they were saying didn't add up, so it didn't. You know, help them where to build a case, and so you know, with this being said, you know, the 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 high priest was was basically being, I want to say, the attorney who, who who was trying to convict them, and so he he was the the chief priest was was actually the one I asked him, so uh, yeah, well, all of this going on, you know, do you have anything to to come against or to speak to to kind of protect yourself? And, and, and here um, it, it says in response that Jesus decided not to say anything. And so uh, what I have wanted to, to, to point out to you this evening is that uh, I, I don't know if you've been in, in this certain season inside of your life. But however, you know, or, or else if you are about to enter into this season, but however, the, the, the you know, uh, one of the things that we don't want to overlook is it not how, how Jesus got to his uh, calling is actually through these proceedings. And so this first one is what we what I like to refer as as a condemnation. And, and so, you know, there are people, I mean, I want to ask you to have you had people that have accused you or have said uh, things about you or, or have taken what you've done or taken what you said out of context uh uh so so then that they could i want to say find something wrong with you and so there are as so peter was, was a representation of someone and, and and this goes as far as you having someone who who was right there amongst you so so you may even have people you know who may be you know uh, uh under your leadership or they may be next to you or connected to you or have something to do with you but however, when they see uh, um, something that's on your life, or when they uh, uh, feel that that you have a certain purpose or a certain calling, or you're made for destiny, that some people uh, tend to to stand stand offish or stand back from you, not to associate yourself with you, not because they 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 are assuming that you're. Uh, that you're fake or you're unreal, but more the times that most people tend to stand back is because most most people just can't handle the the pressure uh, uh, that has been applied to, to to what it is that you have a calling on your life, and, and and so I don't want you to get the misrepresentation of that if you're in that season where you find, uh, as I may put it in plain view, that your kids may may may. May 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 feel standoffish towards you. It's because yeah, they feel that you're being too harsh, or they feel like you're being too controlling, and 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 so there are I I want to say other instances. So there are other people who may feel jealous of, of your uh, 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 being uh, upgraded into your life, or you may be wanting to do something in your life, and so some people would tend to take. What you're doing, and they tend to distort what you're doing, or or or, or should I say, they tend to to look at it as the thing that's happening in your life. Yeah, they look at it as 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 it can't be true. You know these things about you, uh, or in other words, that they say that you're a pastor, or or people know that you're going to be a pastor, but people know, 
you know, those secret things that they heard about you on social media or those things that they heard about what you did in your past. And so uh, attention to that saying that there are some folks who attend to try to bring up old stuff. But however, but I want you to understand that when Jesus, when the high priest asked Jesus that, is he going to speak or say anything to defend himself, to come against what these people are saying about him? And, and and it's remarkable that the word said Jesus say he didn't say anything. And so one one of the things that I want to point out to you is that that by Jesus not saying anything, uh, this is a, this is a representation of of him going through his death process, so then that uh, others can. Uh, well, wait a minute. Let me see. I, okay, it said that he is accused of setting himself in the place. Um, but it says here that he does not defend himself because his death protects from punishment in, in the sinners who have made themselves like God. And so, so in other words, uh, uh, as I may put this in a more plain view, um, when you, when you, uh, as a parent. Uh, when you is at your last, you know, dime, uh, yeah, you will tend to allow yourself to starve, uh, so your kids can eat, and so you you uh, uh decide to go thirsty so your kids can have something to drink, and so there are certain sacrifices that you know that you have to make, uh, to be able to make sure that those that who are in need of it have what it is that they need. And so, so with this situation, uh, uh, there are people that are accusing Jesus of this and that. But however, I, I want to ask you: Was that you know, is you in the season where you're, when you have been accused or you fail like the things that you're going through, uh, uh, that the things that they're going, that the things that you're going through, that you feel like that this is unfair. But I do want you to understand that that the Lord want me to tell you that. He is allowing you to go through this because uh, there, this is one of the stages that it requires uh, yeah, before you can reach to, to your final destination. And so, you know, know the mockery or, or the shame that they had put on Jesus. And so here, um, oh, yeah, yeah, so, and, and so the humiliation is just, Something that I have wanted just to dive more into, um, but but this is about basically what I already covered about um, people that's blindfolded uh, him, and so this is a just a representation of people who are supposed to be by your side, but but then again they actually standing with the people that's accusing you, um, and, and so I I don't want you to think that when people come against you, that it's just going to be the people that's on the outside, but it's also going to be the people that might be inside of, of, of where you are or the people that's connected to you may even turn against you as well. So uh, one of these I want you to understand is I, I don't want you to feel like you have to fight or you have to argue or you have to uh, try to prove, prove yourself for, for Jesus has stood in silence because he he knew that all of the things that they were saying about him, yeah, yeah, was going to all going to fall fall apart. And so now I just want to uh, speak on to to anyone here, though know, that that feels like like they are in that season of, of, of that you have people that were with you at the beginning, yeah, but now they're not no no longer with you or they're or they're standing uh, uh, aside from you or keeping their distance from you. But I do want you to understand that you don't have to say a word. You don't have to defend yourself. So I would like to speak the sevenfold blessings over your life. And so, so, uh, so uh, number one speaks, I speak blessings of health for you and your family. N number two, I speak blessings of deliverance from any habits that you have in your life. N number three, I speak blessings of peace to your mind. From anybody or anything that may be disturbing you. Number four, I speak blessings of salvation to any friends or loved ones. 
And number five, I speak blessings of comfort to any person that's hurting, that is lonely, that is bereaved, or that is confused. Uh, number six, I speak blessings of finances and of debt cancellation and of prosperity and of economic empowerment to all of God's people according to his riches and glory. And number seven, I speak uh, blessings of anointings and promotion in your life to complete your assignment to move forward in your purpose. Uh, you're really going to speak the uh, benedictional speech. And so, uh, if you're trying to find it in the Bible, it, it is in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verse 24 through 26. And it, I'm sorry. And it, uh, it actually reads here on on the back. It said, "It says, may God bless you, may God keep you, may God smile on you, may God gift you, and may God look you full in the face and make you prosper."